This video is going to have a look at how to convert between full structural, condensed structural and skeletal formulas. So first of all, let's kind of identify a little definition for each one. Firstly, for a full structural formula, this simply shows all atoms and all bonds in a molecule. For a condensed structural formula, which is trying to simplify things a little bit, there's two points to bear in mind. First of all, we're going to write this in one line like we would with a normal chemical formula but we're going to order it to show what is bonded to each carbon atom in my main chain. Finally, skeletal formulas. There's a few points here. First of all, we're going to use the vertices of a zigzag line, like the points on a zigzag line to represent carbon atoms. We don't draw hydrogen atoms, but we can work out how many there are with a bit of reasoning. And finally, we do show all atoms if they are in a functional group. So let's have a look at a few examples. Here's the first one. Uh, looks like I've got yeah four carbons. One, two, three, four. Are there any functional groups there? Well, I've got a bromo functional group on the right-hand side. So to convert that into a condensed structural formula, I'm going to order a chemical formula based around what is on each carbon in my main chain. And let's do that from left to right. So on the first carbon, I've got three hydrogens. So I'm going to start with CH3. The second carbon has two hydrogens, so I'm going to write CH2. And the third carbon also has two hydrogens, CH2. And the final carbon has two hydrogens and then my bromo functional group, so I'm going to put CH2Br. So it saves me a bit of time, I don't need to draw the bonds, but it still gives me lots of information about the structure of my molecule. For the skeletal formula here, well we know there's four carbons, so I need to first of all draw a zigzag line with four vertices. So we're going to go first carbon, second carbon, and then to the third carbon, to the fourth carbon. That represents my four carbons. And we've got a bromine on the end, so I need an additional bond to a bromine. You notice I haven't drawn any hydrogens, but knowing that each carbon will always form four bonds, I can actually work out how many hydrogens there must be uh, in each case. Second example, here we go, we've got a methyl group sticking off the side of my main chain. So let's first of all count the number of carbons in my main chain. One, two, three, four. I'm going to write my condensed formula going along that carbon chain and telling uh, in each case what is bonded to it. So the first carbon has three hydrogens, CH3. The second carbon has a hydrogen and also a methyl group sticking off the side. So I'm going to put CH and then in brackets CH3. And why do I put that in brackets? Well, it's so that I don't confuse that methyl group with being in my main chain of carbons. What comes on the third green carbon? Well, it's two hydrogens. And then the fourth green carbon has three hydrogens. And again, Saves me time, don't have to draw the bonds, but it gives me all the information I need in order to understand the structure of that molecule. So what am I going to do for the skeletal formula? Well, again, I've got four carbons, so I need a zigzag line with four vertices, including the first point of the line. So there's one carbon, there's a bond to the second carbon, there's a bond to the third carbon, there's a bond to the fourth carbon. And in this case, my blue methyl group is sticking off the second carbon, so I'm going to add a bond there. So in this case, just for clarity, we've got my four carbons on those four vertices, and then my methyl group is sticking off uh, that second carbon. Third example, let's perhaps this time start with a condensed formula. Uh, and let's try and draw the full structural formula first of all. Well, I've got three carbons in a row, one, two, three. On my first carbon, I've got two hydrogens, one, two. The second carbon, just one hydrogen. The third carbon has got two hydrogens and also an OH group. Now, what's missing at the moment? I know that each carbon must form four bonds. And at the moment, in my full structural formula, this carbon and this carbon do not have four bonds. So what I can work out is that there must be a double bond between those two carbons in order for all of the carbons to have four bonds. So now trying to draw that as a skeletal formula, 
Well, in total, I've got three carbons in my main chain. So I need three vertices. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Sticking off the right-hand side of my molecule is an OH functional group, a hydroxyl functional group, so I need to draw the atoms there. And the other thing to include is that double bond, which is important information. So I'm going to add that between the first and second carbons. Let's take a third example, sorry, fourth example, and let's this time start with a skeletal formula. And um, how am I going to work backwards? Well, I've got one, two, three, four carbons and then a double bond to an oxygen. So let's draw the full structural formula first. Uh, I've got carbon, 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 and then a double bond to an oxygen. And obviously in my skeletal formula, I can't see the hydrogen. So what I'm going to do now in my full structural formula is add hydrogens so that each carbon has four bonds. So the first carbon needs three hydrogens. Second carbon needs two. Third carbon needs two and the fourth carbon actually needs one as well. What's the full, sorry, what's the condensed structural formula going to be? Well, I've got one, two, three, four carbons to focus on. So I'm going to start with the left-hand carbon, CH3, then a CH2, then a CH2, and then a COH. And you'll notice in this case, I've written O, in fact, let me do that again. I'm going to write CHO there. Why am I going to do that? Well, that is slightly different to putting oxygen first. We normally put OH when it's a hydroxyl functional group. And for the carbonyl functional group in an aldehyde, I'm going to put the H before the O just to give me a bit of extra clarity there. That's pretty much it for those types of formulas. Hopefully this video is of some help.